Is anyone really an expert on the subject of what makes a person likable? I mean, people are all so different. For example, some people bungee jump 500 feet off of a bridge just because an employee with the company said it was a good idea. But there's other people that are clutching the railing just to step off of their deck four feet above the ground. Some people jam 70 hot dogs down their gullet for the chance to win $10,000, while some people at home wouldn't feed a hot dog to their dog. But Eric Barker, Wall Street Journal best-selling author of Barking Up the Wrong Tree, interviewed someone who does know how to get other people to like you. That expert is Robin Dreek, former head of the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Program and the author of the book, It's Not All About Me, the top 10 techniques for building quick rapport with anyone. In this video, we will discuss seven ways that FBI expert Robin Dreek says you can be likable to other people. And after each of his points, I will present my take, whether I agree or not. But keep in mind that Dreek is the expert on this, not me. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And tell me in the comments below as we go through the video, which of these you agree or disagree with the most. Now, to the list. Number one, Dreek says, seek someone else's thoughts and opinions without judging them. Ask questions, listen, but don't judge. Nobody, including all of us, likes to feel judged. My take, I agree very strongly with this. A person who is willing to listen openly and without judgment these days is less common than a Brazilian wax in a nursing home. Listening in such a way that the speaker has no clue that you disagree is very much a lost art. Don't forget, it's a conversation, not a competition. If you know someone has opinions that you don't share, ask them to help you understand why they feel the way they do, and then be a respectful audience. Think about it this way. We attend concerts and games mixed up with people all around us who we may have conflicting views with, and we don't even care. And the same should be true in small groups. If you simply cannot do that, then avoid situations where you'll have to rather than being another example of people not getting along. Number two, suspend your ego to get people to like you. Ego suspension is putting your own words, needs, wants, and opinions aside. Ignore your desire to be correct. And man, do some people struggle with that. And avoid correcting someone else. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting emotionally hijacked by a situation you might not agree with. And that can get uglier than a baboon's rear end. My take? Why be the puppet if another person's opinion is the puppeteer. You'll always be responding to outside stimulus, which means you're never in control of your thoughts and emotions. We should always try to keep a lid on what we say and feel. Our opinions are just one of billions floating around. And just because they are ours, doesn't make them special. Number three, how to be a good listener. Stop thinking about your response or how they could be wrong and focus on what they're saying. Be curious and ask to hear more about what interests you. And Dreek has a few reminders for you. The first is, listen doesn't mean interrupting, disagreeing, or evaluating. And definitely not eye rolling or showing any frustration or disagreement. The next is, nod and acknowledge their comments with things like yes, uh-huh, phrases like that. The third, when they finish speaking, repeat back the gist of what they just said from their frame of reference. And the last one is to ask questions that show you've been paying attention. My take on this, all of these tips reinforce to the speaker that you are being respectful and listening, which make you a likable person. So Dreek is right on with these tips. This comes down to an ancient Greek quote, know thyself. 
If you cannot be an impartial listener, then it's better not to engage at all. Failing as a listener will make you unlikable, and that's as desirable as a kick in the shins. Number four, the best question to ask people. Life can be tough for everyone, and we like to talk about our challenges. So according to Dreek, that's what to ask about. Dreek says, a great question I love is challenges. Like, what kind of challenges did you have at work this week? What kind of challenges do you have living in this part of the country? What kinds of challenges do you have raising teenagers? Everyone faces challenges. It takes people to share what their priorities are in life at this point in time. My take on this? I find it very interesting. I like this suggestion in one way because it shows you can relate to the situation other people are in and you're a skilled conversationalist. I do see a downside though. Asking about the challenges can seem a bit negative or pessimistic to some, which rarely makes a person seem more likable. Number five, how to make strangers feel at ease. Tell them right off the bat you only have a minute because you're headed out the door. Dreek says, when people think you're leaving soon, they relax. As opposed to, for example, sitting down next to someone at a bar and saying, hey, can I buy you a drink? In that case, their shields go way up as they think things like, who are you? What do you want? And when are you leaving? Even, are they hitting on you? And research shows that just asking people if now is a good time makes them more likely to say yes. My take on this? I agree that by stating up front that you only have a single question and somewhere else to be makes the person more willing to answer. Just live up to your word and don't linger like a bad odor or you'll be disingenuous from the start. Number six, the best body language for building rapport. Your words should be positive, free of ego and judgment, and your body language matters too. Here are some tips from Dreek regarding body language. Number one, the first thing is you have to smile. Doing so is a great way to build trust. Number two, Keep the chin low and show a little bit of head tilt. The chin up can come off as aloof. Number three, you don't want to give a full frontal, full body display. That could be very offensive or seem aggressive. So turn just slightly. Number four, keep your palms up as you're talking as opposed to palms down. Doing so conveys I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm open to what your ideas are. Number five, Dreek says, I always want to make sure that I'm showing good, open, comfortable non-verbals. I just try to use high eyebrow elevations. Basically, anything going up and elevating is very open and comforting. Anything that is compressing, lip compression, eyebrow compression, where you're squishing down, that's conveying stress. My take? Generally, I agree with his list of body language suggestions. It would be a shame to really enjoy a conversation, but put off bad vibes due to nonverbal problems you're not even aware of. Number seven, how to deal with someone you don't trust. Now, what should you do when you feel someone is using these methods to try and manipulate you? People won't do that, would they? No one's out to manipulate others. Well, unfortunately, that's sarcastic because we know they do. Salesmen since the dawn of time have manipulated emotions to make a sale, and con men will do the same, but often with a worse agenda. If you cross conversational paths with someone you think is a bit shady, Dreek says don't be hostile, but be direct. Ask them what they want, what their goals are in this interaction. My take? Absolutely. You have to be aware of a person's intent. If they give you great positive feedback, but in the end they have some way that they alone can benefit, it may be time to run for the hills. Keep in mind that they may have great motives, so don't be so suspicious that you cannot enjoy the chat or event. There are still more good people than bad. 
please click on the video you see previewed on your screen right now. My hand shows it for you. And please like.